Greetings psychology students. Let me start by stating the objectives of this video. I am pitching this to VCE secondary psychology students who are new to the game of evaluating the validity and the reliability of research data. So I'm going to give a broad overview of the fundamental aspects of these components of the course. I'm not going to go through details of the different types of research reliability and validity that students at a tertiary or postgrad level are required to go into. So in terms of the scope of the relevance of this to the VCE course is you might be asked in a research investigation SAC to evaluate the reliability and the validity of the data generated from an experiment. And this could also happen on the external exam in the, at the end of the year. You might be given a, a research scenario and again asked to evaluate the reliability and the validity. Now, a low-level student response is where students simply state that the data lacks validity or reliability, and they leave it at that. They don't demonstrate in a, any higher-order thinking skills. So my key point of emphasis here is when you're, up, when you're asked to evaluate reliability slash validity, do two things. First of all, define the concept. Show the teacher, the assessor, that you have an understanding of what we mean by validity or reliability, and then you can clearly differentiate the two. Secondly, and this is where the higher order thinking skills need to come into play, your response needs to be clearly linked and relevant to the research scenario in question. So let's get into the fundamentals of, of both concepts. So the key aspect of reliability is consistency via replication. So Reliability, the reliability results is determined by the consistency of the results if the experiment is replicated using the same materials and the same procedures. So if we took an IQ test, IQ is, is fairly static, it's not fluid. So if a, a student, a participant, um, on various occasions, different times of the year, different times of the week, etc., regularly was taking IQ tests and they were consistently getting a fairly similar result, then this reflects that the IQ test is generating reliable data. It's consistent. In terms of validity, the key aspect of that is, is the assessment tool we're using to measure the dependent variable effectively measuring what it's supposed to do? So is that IQ test effectively measuring intelligence or is it culturally biased, is, is there a gender bias, etc. Uh, and this is a bit more difficult for students to um, evaluate. So at times you, you could argue either way, it's, there's a little bit, little bit of subjectivity in it based on limited information from research scenarios. But again, as long as you're showing higher order thinking skills and clearly linking your response to the scenario and defining what we mean by validity, then you're going to be rewarded with those um, high Here's an example of a method of data collection that would potentially lack both validity and reliability. Any type of self-reporting is brings in sub, into play some subjectivity. So if you're asked if there's you're given an inventory test um, and given asked to rate from zero to five how, how you're feeling about certain things, so this might relate to an anxiety test or um, the sleep that we cover in in the first area study for unit four, then due to the wording effect, the subjectivity, it may lack validity because it's not accurately measuring what it's supposed to measure, whether it be anxiety, attitudes to sleep, etc. And likewise, if the time of day, if the time of week, if your, your general health, etc. is compromising the results uh, and rendering results that would potentially be inconsistent, then the results are lacking reliability. So again, you need to make two separate points here. Say that the, the self-report may lack validity because it's not measuring um, what it's supposed to measure. Uh, again, there's outside variables such as placebo effects, experimenter effects, non-standardized procedures. These can all compromise the validity. And then go into detail about the results may be inconsistent, um, therefore lacking reliability. So the type of methods of data collection that might have um, relatively high levels of validity and reliability are physiological measures. We're, we're relevant in the course. Um, the advantage of using a physiological measure is that it's objective, not subjective. So if you want to 
um, use a, an EEG to measure brain level activity and then you're asked to evaluate the validity and the reliability, you, you could argue that an EEG is um, effective in measuring what it's supposed to measure and that's brain waves, the, the frequency, the amplitude, etc. And if use of that EEG across multiple testing phases is generating uh, a consistent level of results based on the, the um, participant's state of consciousness at, at, the, at a certain point in time, then you can argue that the, this method of data collection is generating reliable results. So I hope that's been of use to students.